Hello and welcome to Dinish Guarda YouTube podcast series, powered by citiesabc.com, openbusinesscouncil.org, and fashionabc.org. Once again, we are here to profile world leaders and personalities changing the world and creating new wonderful things that actually can actually help us with the, nar the narratives that we have on the day lives, but as well, how we can actually think in more positive ways of uh, getting out of our challenges, our issues, and especially how we cope with business, with technology, and with creativity, which is probably one of the few things that AI still does manage to change very well. I think in our series, one of the things we've been trying to do is uh, portray the makers, the doers, and especially the creative people that are really coming up with a, um, a path of work. Um, and as well, I would say, things that it can actually take us out of our comfort zones and as well, especially bringing a big step forward in terms of the way we take things. Art is one of them. And uh, of course, my YouTube has been more about technology and business and how we take these strategies, but I have a background in art. So um, it's one of my passions as well, especially the way we look at art in a contemporary way, but as well with historical uh, perspectives and how we can actually work all these wonderful tools of our fourth industrial revolution um, in order to improve and create better solutions for the creative economy and as well the gig economy that we are all part of. And uh, one of the things before I go and introduce our guest is that definitely the art world is going through a lot of challenges, but a lot of opportunities as well. And the, for instance, one interesting number is that the creative economy is around right now reaching over $100 billion, but the gig economy is over $1 trillion. And the challenge right now is how we can actually have more people using tools like this one on YouTube, podcasts and series around the world to improve ecosystems, to create new revenue streams and to create better ways of portraying, promoting and distributing our creativity, our works. So to our series today, I welcome someone I really uh, admire and respect a lot, Amrita Sethi. And uh, Amrita is uh, an out of the box personality. So she's a force of nature for her work and as well for her persistence and as well a creativity. She is one of the leading artists in NFTs and uh, as well an award-winning award um, artist that has been um, working between Dubai and the world, but as well working in solutions uh, for the art that are quite unique, uh, using both um, augmented reality, using as well a lot of bridges between conventional art and other arts, and as well making a lot of bridges in different areas. So the Amrita career uh, spans um, over a decade and uh, she's been working with some of the largest art institutions and as well financial institutions. Um, so Amrita is quite a unique case because she started a career in the financial world, working for some of the leading banks. And then she decided to follow her personal path of coming to the arts and creativity, which she um, engaged uh, in a fantastic way and has been as well working in a new art form of multimedia that uh, she called the vo voice note art now call called soundbite that are going to be talking about that today and uh, the work of uh, amrita is particularly unique in the sense that she is one of the first artists first of all embedding fully uh, nfts but as well augmented reality in a very practical way, a lot of the things in art are much more institutional driven or museums driven. And I think Amrit has been actually always making the bridge between societies, cities um, and the business world. And as well in a very creative uh, 360 level. And uh, Amrita was born and raised in Kenya, is a British citizen of Indian origin. And of course, she has been traveling around the world and residing around the world. So from a multiple cultural background from Switzerland to Zimbabwe, Uganda, and of course, United Kingdom and UAE. And she moved to uh, Dubai um, uh, some time ago. And there she's been reflecting her international diversity and combining uh, tradition, storytelling with an energy and technology. And like I mentioned, things like NFTs and all the different things. So she's been portrayed in some of the biggest media platforms in the world, from Forbes to CNN, BBC, and the especially winning awards. And she was selected as well, the Expo 2020, 
uh, in terms of one of the artists uh, that had been uh, with live installations and activations in Middle East, Europe. And she's as well has been sold uh, worldwide uh, substantial money in NFTs, actually over half a million dollars. And regularly she bridge, bridges the gap between physical arts, digital arts and augmented reality, which we're going to be talking. And I would say that is one of the first metaverse artists, let's put it that way. <clears throat> and as well, the soundbite uh, uh, IP that she built is a very unique creativity environment that merges sound, technology, storytelling, with the non-fungible tokens, giving her a perfect platform to showcase dynamic uh, shifting art that is fantastic to see and fantastic to hear. And we're going as well to integrate some images during this interview. So Marita, welcome to our series. Thank you so much, Denise, and uh, amazing to be here. And so good, um, obviously the last time we saw each other uh, was in Egypt and amazing to connect here now digitally. Thank you. So. So I have, um, as you know, a lot of passion for your for your work. Actually, I've been by some of that, and I hope to buy more. But one of the things that I'm really excited is is um, to understand how did you come back, or then did you come to become the artist and the personality you are? So and you have as well, like I mentioned, a very um, rich experience of cultures and different education. Um, and of course, someone that work in the uh, in the London city to someone that is right now in the world of arts and, and a lot of different areas and you are as well a, an artist entrepreneur. So can you tell us a bit about your background, education? How did you went through this shift career to become the personality you are now? Thank you so much. And thank you so much already for the introduction. Um, you know, you've given us some of the, the key spoilers away, but absolutely, I was born in Kenya. Um, I'm of Indian origin, you know, British. Um, you know, lived in lots of different countries across Africa, the UK, uh, Switzerland, and have now called Dubai my home since 2007. So naturally, I'm somebody who has come from so many different uh, cultures um, merged together. And I think that really, for me, I'm so grateful because it really kind of gives that depth to, um, I would say, depth to my sort of understanding of the world and the people and being able to tell people stories. Um, right, and being able to capture that. And so I started my career off in, um, in banking, but it's, I kind of fell into it, if I'm honest. Like when I was younger, I was always very sort of um, passionate about art, but also I then weirdly fell in love with economics, um, which is slightly a weird thing to fall in love with, but I did. And um, then from there, I, I just, it started my career path on, on you know becoming working in the UK uh, for uh, you know private banking and then also in Dubai with some of the world's largest financial institutions as well as Switzerland and then a couple of years ago I decided that um, I had wanted I'd worked all my life in big corporates and I wanted at first I wanted a more entrepreneurial calling I would say I didn't necessarily say you know I wanted to become an artist I just wanted to be more entrepreneurial and then when I did that, when I took that step back, I had a moment to think, and I know all of our lives get super busy. Um, and sometimes we forget to put ourselves first or we lose sight, I would say, of who we actually really are or what our authentic voice is. And so when I did take that time to pause, I then kind of connected a lot with myself. And also a couple of years before that, I would say I went on um, a bit of a personal growth journey um, and so this had already started kind of festering inside me, kind of questioning who I am and really, you know, where my, where my kind of purpose and place is in the world. And, and that's when I discovered my true authentic voice and that I had connected, I reconnected to my artistic self and I created what I called then at the time voice note art, but now I call sound bites. And effectively what uh, a sound bite is, is, um, as I take a, a word and I capture the shape and structure of the sound wave, and then each of the lines of the sound wave, I draw to match the meaning of the word, right? Um, and so this is uh, similar. We'll get onto my art in a, mi in a minute. But it was more, I would say, just going back from my background is just saying, you know, understanding and connecting to who I am, finding my voice, going inside, 
and saying that I have the power and the potential to change my story, um, to change my trajectory. And, and then from there, I became um, an artist first with my own art genre. And then it was only until, you know, COVID, until we were in lockdown, um, did I discover NFTs. And that's how I became the first NFT artist um, in the UAE. Um, and then from there, it's just literally been a whirlwind when everybody wants to know everything about art and NFTs. So one of the things you mentioned that is very important as well for me is that you you have the corporate experience, then you went for your personal discovery, but you had always a creative heart inside of you. So can you tell us that 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 uh, decision? Because of course, uh, one of the things that happens, especially in people that are in corporations, is that they're quite well paid. And in the art world is much more unstable and there's a lot of uh, other challenges um, that most of the creative artists, unless you are an influencer or a celebrity, you have a bit of a sense of entrepreneurial. But how did you shift that part? And as well, uh, uh, as well, if you can tell us how you start doing your art, because I'm sure that started a long time ago, probably before, and uh, a bit of that trajectory, because I think it's good to dismystify this because people that are in technology look at art in a different way. And as well, the NFT industry, became a revolution in the end of the day, created a lot of new possibilities that we didn't have before. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very good question. And one that I don't necessarily always focus on is that shift. Um, so as I said, you know, I was in the corporate world, you know, and I very corporate. I've worked with lots of the world's largest financial institutions. Um, and I, you know, so I left that world, which was a big decision, first of all, um, to go more entrepreneurial. But I went going saying that I'll leave the finance corporate world to become a finance entrepreneur. But in that time when I, you know, just had that time to relax, even, as I said, even between saying, okay, what am I going to do as a finance entrepreneur? I wanted to have my own financial consultancy. I took some time off. And I think that in our adult lives, we are running at a million miles per hour. And a lot of the time we don't have time to just sit and reflect within ourselves. I had started a lot of meditation and personal growth journey, I would say a couple of years before that, um, which again, I'm very lucky that I've had the opportunity to connect to that side. Again, I feel that a lot of people in this day and age, um, you know, either write it off as being maybe a bit too sort of spiritual or, or that, but I think there's a bigger movement to understanding a real, what mindfulness means to all of us, right? And are we doing our work mindfully? Are we connecting to ourselves mindfully? And are we connecting to our purpose mindfully? And so when I had that moment to just kind of go inside, that's when I was like, okay, um, I just started getting creative. And that's when I discovered that I wanted to create this art concept, which when I created it, I realized nobody had ever done it before. So I, you know, so I thought, okay, let me copyright it. Now, if you have to think about it at the time, like, you know, my family and friends around me, I wasn't an artist, I was a banker, or I was a financial person. And all of a sudden I start talking about art. All of a sudden I start talking about copywriting. And they're like, oh, it's a cute hobby for you to have. But like, you know, nobody cares about your art style. You don't need to copyright anything. But because I did have that connection to my, you know, to the, like, to the, to, to you know, the, prof like, sort of the, the professional side of me, I was like, no, there's something needs to tell me that this is what I need to do. So I went into stealth mode. I did a lot of that. And also I started to build my website and my business, my art business on the side in complete stealth mode, because what I didn't want is I didn't want people who were going to sandbag me to the naysayers, because I was a bit unsure about what I was doing. I had a bit of imposter syndrome saying, this is ridiculous, I'm a banker, why am I trying to make a business from art when I don't know anything about it, right? And so for a while there, I was doing both. So I was doing my, my you know, setting up my, my, uh, my business, uh, my financial business, but starting quietly to develop that. When I realized and I got the copyright that nobody had actually created the art genre like me, I knew I was then validated that I was onto, onto something. And then I started to do a bit of work. Like I released my collection, one person found it. The next thing I know, I was in the biggest art fair in Dubai, at Art Dubai. Then I won an award. Then I got 
you know, selected for Expo. And that was all in the one year while I was still building my financial entrepreneurial business. So, you know, when they say like, make your side hustle a hustle and until it became a main hustle. By the end of the year, my side hustle had become the main hustle. Um, and that led me up to the end of 2019, um, early 2020. Then COVID hit. And I was actually at the time, which was ironic because at the time I was creating my art digitally, but obviously NFTs weren't a thing. So I was making them into physical artwork. I was painting murals in the city of Dubai. I was going to make sculpture for Expo. And so when COVID hit, I thought my originally digital collection that I'd made physical had gone, had, my art career was finished because I was like, well, I can't paint murals anymore. I can't make these sculptures. Um, there's no point in even thinking, you know, you know, like I'll just go focus back on building my financial business. And then during COVID, when everyone started to go online, I realized, but I'm making all my art digitally anyway. How can I start to make things, you know, more exciting? Like, can I create an algorithm that can take my voice and generate art in a way that's different and within seconds. So for somebody who never has never had a tech background, I'm not formally trained in the arts. I then just went and taught myself and found the right people from across the globe during COVID, how I could then take the ideas that I was manifesting, that I was connecting to myself, make that into a reality and then I learned so much along the way. And that's when I found NFTs. And because of my background in the financial world, because at the time I'd heard of blockchain, most artists wouldn't have heard of blockchain. Um, but because of my financial background I had, I put two and two together and realized that this was definitely the future. So that kind of happened in terms of the transition, which is actually an interesting one and, and a story that sometimes gets overlooked. Um, but it's those trials and tribulations of doubting, but being excited by learning new things and actually just stumbling on what could have, I thought was impossible that I made them possible. That's beautiful. And, and really uh, congratulations because you, you actually created something beautiful, but as well as a great example for a lot of creators around the world, because you actually um, took uh, your passion you put it forward, but as well, you work not just on your passion, you work in an ecosystem. And this is actually one of the, the biggest challenges as well right now for the world economy, because at the end of the day, we're talking about you as someone that comes from financial and, and business background, but the world economy is a bit, we, have a, we are in a paradox that with AI, we're going to be able to replace a huge part of the world forces. And actually a lot of AIs have already quite advanced. So before I go to that, so when you start, uh, let's look at the process, how we went into the NFTs and how do you start putting NFTs and as well AR, because you are quite unique. It's not just NFTs. You are integrating uh, augmented reality um, and these very practical things. That is what I love about your art is a lot of artists are purely speculating on some beautiful images that they sell. Uh, but your mm -hmm. art has a much more dynamic perspective of embracing all this different innovation. But at the same time, creating a, a cool factor because effectively a lot of NFTs are purely speculation of beautiful uh, kind of aesthetics. In your case, there's a lot of components together. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I find that, you know, um, my art kind of reflects who I am as a personality, right? I'm somebody who I'm not a digitally native person. I Like I'm not even a formally trained graphic designer. I'm not a you know, the tech expert or, you know, somebody from the tech world. Um, I'm somebody who has got a business background and is very artistically and very spiritually connected. And so for me, my art just combines all of those things. And when I look to also think, what is it that people want? But also, like, how how is the, I would say not how what people want, but how is the market developing? I'm able to tune into all of these kind of very subtle changes that happen in the market, but even hap tune in even before almost the trend happens, if that makes sense. So for example, you know, when I was in lockdown and I discovered NFTs, I understood that this was going to be something uh, 
very big, but it was going to take a while for people to understand. When I launched, it was like launching amongst crickets, right? There were a lot of people who didn't understand what NFTs were. I remember I wasn't calling them NFTs at the time. I was calling them digital art um, and I was trying to explain it. In fact, a lot of the time people were just laughing at me. So when I did sell them to some of the OGs in the space, um, my friends and family were like laughing and people were mocking me. And I thought, you know, even to be honest, it was, it kind of was also slightly amusing me in a way. I was like, wow, this is, you know, I'm trailblazing, but actually it's something that is working. Then it was only until people sold his work for $69 million was when, boom, the whole world woke up to it. And, you know, and then, and then that's when, you know, big news companies like CNN, BBC, you know, CNBC, Euronews, they came to me saying, well, you've been talking about this for a while. Now we understand, right? And so we had this massive push notification to, uh, to NFTs. But what I found very quickly was that, you know, there was this big hype and obviously, you know, people were attracted to the money side. And then that started to set off, I would say, many alarm bells to me from a financial uh, perspective, right? Because you start to see where, where the honey money is, the honey is, and the bees will come, right? And then, you know, and then you looked at the, the landscape and the fact that it was, you know, that it is still, you know, there needs to be a lot more regulation. And there were a lot of people, just like within any industries, there's people who want to do well for the ecosystem, but there'll also be people who will take opportunity. And so, you know, you had this rise of this 10,000, you know, NFT collections. And that kind of went to the point where people were like, okay, um, you know, that the first few ones were genuinely building the community in a way that was organic and was highlighting some of the real great benefits of what NFTs can do in terms of utilities, community, and changing the way we work at a fundamental level, literally creating a paradigm shift on how we can reorganize society. And people, if you look back at the history books already, you're now gonna see in a very short period of time that that organic nature and that level of, of great intent is what we need to you know, copy, mimic, and make more of. But at the same time, what happened was you then got, um, you know, these NFT projects starting to be trade like, you know, stocks and, you know, and then you starting to have that got into the that very shaky moment. So while I sort of saw all of that, I was like, you know, a lot of people were saying, aren't you doing your 10,000 NFT projects? And I was like, well, no, I'm going to stick to what I, what I, what I believe is what people can understand right now. And so when I then painted in October last year, I painted one of the world's largest um, mural, which is behind me. And it was the first mural in the UAE of this size. So it's 20 meters long, 15 meters high. And what I wanted originally to do was I just wanted to tell the story about NFTs. So you see it says future NFT Dubai. And I did this in my soundbite style where I first said a word and I captured the word future NFT Dubai and then each of the lines of the sound wave I've drawn to match the meaning of, of the word and if you can see what I've done is I've added new characters in to this artwork from everything from you know the MetaMask man to the VR to the lady with Bitcoin a buyer you know to a crypto shake using the words NFT Ethereum blockchain and this was more just as in inter, like an introduction as well as an education to the masses, because what you can't do is you can't just have a small group of people having this massive revelation, but not taking people along the journey for people to really understand. And when I created it, I thought, well, there must be also using technology now that we're so advanced is how can I bring this mural to life? And then that's when I applied augmented reality to it. I had never done augmented reality. I had only heard about it. And actually I didn't even tell anybody that I was even going to do the augmented reality on the mural because I was too scared it wouldn't even work. And then that started my journey into this hybrid physical versus virtual world, digital world in these hybrid experiences 
because the reality is is that there's still even that at the time and even today almost a year and a half later people cannot wrap their heads around not being able to have a physical experience and only understanding why somebody would have just a digital nft and and so what i would just say is that my ability just to adapt and understand what people feel for what people understand and how to connect with people so that they do kind of come with you on that journey does that does that make sense no no it's beautiful and i love this energy that you have because uh, one of the challenge that i face when i speak with artists and even big musicians or creators is that they get super afraid um, of the tech and in your case you embrace the tech as as organically as a way of solving problems and as a way of expressing our creativity so i, I want to touch that part because it's really very important i think for people listening to us especially creators is that i've been talking with some well i interviewed some of the biggest people in the planet and one of the things that i found out is actually for us i had one of the biggest filmmakers alive and his team came to us and say can you help us creating nfts we all wouldn't pay for that and i said well the idea of nfts is actually to be a tool and, and this is a very new thing it's just two years old so so let's talk how you because in your case you use quite advanced technology but you make it quite simple so you're talking about ar and uh, and as well uh, of course uh, um, all the areas of nfts which created the nfts and as well sound um, and at the same time you're right now creating wearables uh, or at least integrating some of the things with with the, the merchandising and some of your paintings in in wearables which i think it's wonderful what you're doing on that level so i would like you to talk about that what you do and i think for people that don't know so much your work uh some of the things where they can find as well and how you are keeping pushing forward on that yeah absolutely so you know the concept behind is so effectively my art is a all about storytelling right and so they say you know um a picture's worth a thousand words i say a word is worth a thousand pictures and you know also the way we um tell stories are the way we kind of impact people right so with these new stories these new images we're then creating new narratives and when we create new narratives we create new paradigms and we change the way people think and so to its core all i want to do is change the way people see their lives and empower change through art and technology but what i do realize is that we have two types of demographics um that are here we have the current generation that still um believes in connecting to physical goods and then we have the future generation that only will also will fully exist within the metaverse so talking about the current generation which i'm very much part of people want experiences but they want to also to be taken along the journey so with my art what i do is i tell the story through my art but i also then choose the medium in which to tell it and then layer on the experience so for example as you were rightly saying i'm i have my soundbite um stories or my artwork and then i can either make them as nfts because for me nfts is just a medium i can make them as physical artworks and i can make them as fashionable wearables so hoodies t-shirts women's capes or buyers dresses swimwear you name it as well as you know murals and sculptures but how do we then have it so that you then have that hybrid experience so all of my artwork you're able to if it's got a qr code there you scan the qr code that opens up into some sort of augmented reality i like to use instagram but there are other ones like art of vibe and other features that come in you hold that and all of a sudden your the whole artwork comes to life um and you can definitely go and try it even on my website if you go to my website at amrita.art you're able to actually even wherever you see a scan a qr code you can bring it to life wherever you are and all of a sudden what that does is opens what i call up this amazing real estate between you and the artwork that actually can tell the story in a digital way and maximizing technology to supersize our life we've supersized our life with technology in all aspects of our life 
Why can't we do it with creativity? And that's why NFTs is unlocking creativity like we will never see before. And it's not even necessarily NFTs. It's about the digital revolution that is happening to art. And then from there, brands can follow because then all of a sudden, you're able to engage with your audience in a way that has never existed before. And I think that's why I find it so exciting. Yeah, I, lo I love the way you put it and as well, the, the passion that you have for that. So, so I, I know that uh, at the moment, there's two kind of narratives around the NFTs. There are people that, uh, like you and me, that are already embracing and taking it forward. But there's still a lot of uh, issues around uh, um, how we take it forward and how we, we use it, like you just said. And one of the challenges is, is kind of, uh, in one end, the NFTs, uh, especially in 2021, 2022, they took the art world to double of the size. So in the end of the day, in, before the NFT industry, the art world was around 11 billion to $20 billion, which was quite, quite small. Just the NFTs in the, last, in the last one year just took these to completely different ball games. So, um, so I think that's the kind of the things that I, I would be interested in because we, we kind of triple or quadruple the art world. There's different numbers, but we're talking between 65 billion to 400 billion if you put a lot of different things. And, and just the NFTs in this industry alone, is, it's a massive thing. So that's effectively a big weight on this. And a lot of people talk about bubbles and speculation, but in the end of the day, like you say, a lot of artists can actually sell their IP and explain this. So I would like to see from your side as an artist, uh, not from the expert part, but as an artist and as a, a, an entrepreneur or a creative entrepreneur, because in the end of the day, you're part of the creative economy. How do you deal with that from the beginning of creating and putting it forward to people that buy your NFTs and your community? Yeah, I think, you know, at the moment, I would say that with NFTs, oh, there's just so many layers to it, right? So with Currently at the moment, if people buy an NFT, they want to see um, some sort of utility, right? And so, uh, and that's, you can also, I mean, there's, you, there's, there's so many layers to what I'm, I'm saying. So it's like, but every point I make, I can make a counterpoint if that also makes sense. But what I've decided to do just in terms of my own thing is I've said, for me, NFTs is a medium in which you can access my art. So, for example, next month uh, or this month in about two weeks time, I'm going to be releasing my augmented reality soundbite collection. And within my augmented reality soundbite collection it's going to be focused on cities. And then I'm also going to do a small Christmas collection where I create first the art. So I have the artwork itself and then you can purchase it in three manners. You can either buy it as a physical artwork. You can buy it as an NFT, or you can buy it as a, as, a, as a physical wearable. All three of them will have the augmented reality function. So what that all of a sudden does is says to that to is how would you like to collect my art, right? It's just a medium. There are going to be people who want to say, I want to just collect your digital piece and I don't care about the NFT. And they're going to be people who say, I just want the NFT. I don't even have a house to put a digital artwork. And, you know, which is very true in today's nomad uh, crypto culture. People live in so many different places and they understand the value of having an NFT from me for my original augmented reality soundbite collection, for example. Um, and so that there, there are people who will just want the digital wearable because they like it or and or if that makes sense. But my key thing that I'm making very different is, is that with my physical artwork, I will have a limited edition of 12 pieces. My, uh, my wearables are an open edition, so there can be as many produced, but there'll only be one NFT that will symbolize that. So the NFT is the most rare. Does that make sense? So all of a sudden, if you're then looking at from a collector perspective, even the collector who's used to working, like, you know, um, buying physical artwork, at a conceptual level, even maybe they might understand that buying my NFT is better than buying even my physical artwork because that way 
they also, they get something that's really, truly scarce and unique. Whereas the other ones, you're getting a 12 limited edition, which is still very little um, amount of pieces, but at the same time, it's not just the one of one, which is the digital. So I'm trying to educate people by giving them options and by expanding the way they approach it and educating them, them through consumer behavior rather than keep saying NFTs are going to be the next great thing, NFTs are going to be the next great thing. Does that make sense? No, it's wonderful. And I love what you put it because it's, it's really what you said. I think we have multiple things and this all happened very fast. So like, like any kind of uh, technological innovation, it, it's very complex and, and, uh, and at the same time, uh, it opens a lot of doors, but a lot of people get overwhelmed. Actually, the electricity, the, the president, when the electricity was put in the White House in the United States, the president ran away from the White House. So this is kind of a bit less dangerous, but uh, people get a lot of problems on that. But I think the, the thing here is that you actually are building a strong international brand that is growing quite significant and as well in, in, in the UAE, which is right now the, the capital of the world of creativity and, and actually technology. And it's actually passing London, where I am based, in a lot of ways. If you, if you see the way the UAE is actually pushing the narrative, it's quite impressive, to say less. So if you look at, uh, so from your work and the different things, you mentioned cities, you mentioned uh, elements, and of course, we have something behind you. Have, you said that you're doing uh, a lot of different things from painting to reflection and, and the, then the, the augmented reality part of it. So. Let's look, we spoke about the NFTs now. Now let's look at the augmented reality because I know and you talk about metaverse. So how do you see these things, especially when it comes to your work as an artist and you as an artist and as a part of the creative economy that you are creating? Because in the end of the day, it's your own creative economy because you created your website, you have to create the sales, the e-commerce part. There's, of course, if you build an NFT, you have to put it in OpenSea or other platforms. There's a huge amount of work that people forget. And a lot of people that are in their lab or their studio for doing some kind of creative stuff but they forget that it's an ecosystem and it's about people actually even in my people i always say on my team the other day the strength of our success is the strength of our ecosystem so an artist is well an ecosystem if you look from rubens to rembrandt to all the most successful or less successful artists in history were the ones that created an ecosystem of collectors and some of them are very commercial driven but at the same time now with these tools you can create a lot of beautiful things and we can actually engage with people that really, truly love our stuff, like these YouTube channels and what you're doing as well with the NFTs and the augmented reality. But with augmented reality, you're doing really some amazing things. And, and uh, if you can highlight some of the case studies, other yeah. things that you like more. No, first of all, for me, the augmented reality is, I would say, step one, right? And step one to really getting people to engage about how that, how for people to see the world differently, how art is going to be experienced. What augmented reality shows is that art is no longer a 2D flat experience. It's now, um, you know, an interactive sensory, um, multi-sensory experience where you can take a flat object and bring it to life, right? And so what I'm finding is that I work with a lot of, so first of all, just obviously for my own collections, using that to tell the story that I want to tell um, in a dynamic form. But also what I find is brands are very, you know, that this is what they're most interested in at the moment, is having something that's physically there with the digital experience. And hence why augmented reality, I think, is the first thing to really take off. And if it hasn't already, it's going to take off even more. A fun fact, before 20, before COVID, I used to have to do how to QR code videos, like because people didn't know how to do a QR code. And that was in 2019. At the moment, I have, you can go to my website, how to do an augmented reality video. There are still so many people who have never done augmented reality. So how do you go scan a QR code, open up Instagram, do the, you know, you know, point at the image. People still don't know how to do that. And so I predict that in the future, everyone will know how to do augmented reality because augmented reality will not just be for art it will be on our menus it will be when we go to the store every single thing will become augmented reality in some form so that's the first thing and this is the easiest thing because what you're doing is you're taking tech that is already in people's hands that is easily accessible not too scary not having to put it over their eyes as a different appendage 
if that makes sense. So onto that. So this is why augmented reality is, and that's why I'm focusing on it and making it very that link between the physical and the digital. But I do believe also in exploring more for my creative curiosity as well, is working in the metaverse and in VR. So I have worked with VR. So I've actually created one of the world's first mindful meditation metaverse experience in virtual reality, where you go in and I've created this world where you can go and sit on a floating yoga mat and meditate to a floating crystal all in virtual reality. And the reason why I did that is because that I wanted to have an all encompassing space because the VR, the AR is a quick interaction for you to either get some information, have an experience, be entertained, um, capture on social media, share with your friends. Whereas with the virtual reality, it became more of a more deeply personal experience where you are able to go into a space that's fully immersive and it's there to amplify a meditation experience. Now, if anyone's tried to meditate, a lot of the time you get distracted. Whereas when you go into VR, you're completely encompassed in that world. And what I've done within that is I've gone and then infused human consciousness by putting in sound and healing energy for people to just go take a quick break, relax and come out. And so that's how I've, explore, um, I've explored with VR. Now, going into the metaverse, which is now the future and also something that's going to really overtake everything, is where it's going to start with the metaverse is being able for people to jump into the metaverse through their phones or through their laptop in a way that it is as seamless with the AR so that they can interact with it. Later on, and I predict much, much later on, will there be the combining of the VR with the metaverse when a lot more people get used to this VR. So I do think that there's a journey. And I think as an artist, what I try to do is I try to engage creatively in what excites me, in what I think I, I what enhances the story that I'm trying to tell. So am I trying to have a bit of fun and you know cool um, vibes with augmented reality? Am I trying to get deep and personal with VR? Or am I trying to change the way people see it across all three platforms? Um, and I think that's, and I think you've just got to pick your, pick your platform in the journey that you're on basically. Yeah, that's uh, the key element. And I, I love the way you put the relationships between the different environments and as well the experimental side, because one of the, the things I always provoke people is you are spending four hours in front of the device. For example, yesterday, I did, uh, yesterday, no, last week, I did a guest lecture in a business school and most of the students were 20 something and they were all panicking about the metaverse. They said, we are already in metaverse. You spend four hours in your phone. And uh, even the ones that say it's one hour or two is not one hour or two. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, you know what I mean? So one one question right now, and I know that yeah, this no, one hours. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say on that point, because it is a very important point, everybody gets confused what the metaverse is. All the metaverse is, is just an interactive website. That's all it is, really, in right. a way that you can go into it. The difference is when we're looking at the screen, we're in, we are in, but now we are actually able to take our avatar and explore deep into that interactive site. And I think to dispel that is, is very important. Now, uh, it's the most important and it's the immersive part of the internet that is happening already. Like you said, if you go to Google Earth or Google, uh, well, I think and even Google Maps is already an immersive experience. So we're already there. So one of the things that is particularly unique in your work is that you are as well starting to work with big brands, like not starting work, you work with big brands. And, uh, and I think it's a quite, interesting components there's of course there was always uh, artists but it's quite unique what you're doing right now mixing your creativity with the uh, automobile brands fashion brands and so forth so can you tell about that for people listening to us yeah absolutely i think with a lot of brands first come to me and just say first of all just tell my story like how can we use with your your actual artwork itself so your art genre sound bites um i've also created my own language called the alpha bites and crystal bites so they say, using your art, how can we tell the story of our brand? Number one, step one. 
Number two, how do we engage with our audience in a way that is not, that is a bit tech savvy, but not tech scary. And so at the moment, people feel still that NFTs, especially what have happened with, you know, uh, that, you know, what's been happening and, and sort of the noise in the market, people think NFTs and then they get a little bit scared. I think a lot of companies still don't have, you know, the full policy around how they want to interact with NFTs. They don't have enough education, but especially the people at the decision makers at the top. So now they're just looking for experiences. And so you know, using augmented reality, like for example, I worked with Canon, I created a beautiful artwork with, for them. And we also created an augmented reality, but as a physical artwork and a digital fashion piece. Uh, with, for example, you know, Altair Motors in Dubai, they hosted um, the Casa Ferrari event in Abu Dhabi. And we bought, um, you know, I created an augmented reality video booth with an augmented reality mural for people to actually experience um, this kind of hybrid reality and bring the car to life and get people to engage with it also on social media and in public. So there, I know I've worked with Maserati and Biasdorf with Nivea. So there's so many different types of brands, but at the moment, a lot of them are looking for experiences over NFTs. What I all tell them um, is, you know, still get the NFT. And even though, even if you just have one NFT that you keep in your wallet somewhere within the company, that later on, that will also be a bit of a legacy for you to know that that was also maybe the first NFT that your company created. And I think just having that first initial conversation, that first interaction with people is, and how, you know, just changing that story, I think at the moment is what brands are look up wanting, but I think they want a lot more, but they're still very tentative in this space. And to be honest, I can't blame them because we are in a very bleeding edge technology, as you know, as we're building the technology, it's literally bleeding at the same time. And so there's still glitches that happens. Um, obviously, you know, the market moves up and down, but the important thing is as a creative artist, I work with brands to show them what technology can do from a creative perspective that can bring their brand to life in a way that is more interesting and engaging and that you know inspires the next generation and i think that's if at the core of it i think that's what most brands are looking for at the moment yeah i love that this is really the the fantastic work that you're doing but as well this initiative because in the end of the day, brands need artists and artists need brands and i think that's where a lot of new, new revenue streams can work. And actually people can create a lot of new solutions for their lives. So let, let's look at one thing for young people listen to you, because I think you are a great teacher as well with your energy and as well the capacity to communicate. Um, let's say if an artist listen to us, wants to learn how to get into NFTs, AR, what should be the steps? Because I, I think this is more particular because I know that it's wonderful and I think you should come to some art schools and teach them. I think probably is a new, a new area for you because that's no schools is teaching this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean you know, honestly, when I'm, if I'm ever, um, you know, you mentioned earlier that an artist has to have many hats. And I think as an artist, you know, a lot of people don't understand you have to be the creative, but you also have to be a leader. You have to be an educator. Uh, you have to be a pioneer and you also have to know how to, do everything as a full business owner, right? So doing everything from the creation to the technology, to the marketing, to the building your community. I mean, it's a lot of work that goes into it. And at the moment, that's kind of where I've been set and spent a lot of my space. But going forward for next year, as I wanna spend a lot more time educating people and the youth are great ones. They all want to, they all think that, NFT artists in the making and how do we make them? So the, I mean, in terms of where to start, I think, you know, just like you would create a normal artwork, what is the story you're trying to tell? You create the artwork and then you decide, am I going to make that artwork into the physical artwork or as an NFT? Then if you want to make it as an NFT, the best way to do it is you can, you know, with most young people now, they go to YouTube or even TikTok. Um, you know, do a couple of how-to videos, 
you know, go on OpenSea, make a video, make an NFT. It's not hard. Obviously, you still need to learn how to open a MetaMask wallet. But, you know, I've also got some videos on my YouTube, cha YouTube channel on how to, you know, open a MetaMask wallet, all of these things, how to go onto Polygon, how to go and eat, um, make it. And then guess what? Start the journey of trying to sell it. So when you try to sell your artwork, you then need to think, okay, what is the story? What is the story that I did when I made this artwork? How am I going to communicate it to people? How am I going to grow my community? Um, who's going to be in my community? How am I going to target those people? How am I going to market to those people? And then you start to realize how much work is involved. It's not just as simple as, oh, I'm going to make an artwork, take a picture. It's just a JPEG and minted on OpenSea and voila, I'm an NFT artist. And so there's so many different steps to, um, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, how to, to actually start as an NFT artist, but that's, that's a, a good, a good place. That's a uh, wise words. And actually, I think, uh, I hope that everyone listening to us can actually get a solution for that because that's, that's one of the things definitely that is key. And I think, not, I think I, I am completely affirmative that I would say 99% of the art schools and business schools don't teach anything of this, which gets me scared. Come on, we are in an AI economy. So I, I know that we are wrapping up. So I have, so what are you, I have two questions more. Let's start with one a bit more technical. Uh, so one of the things that is happening right now, and Chris, there's a lot of tools, um, especially in AI and art, and I'm sure you are testing some of them. And some of this is becoming really disruptive. For instance, uh, even as with Studio, of course, we build AI, AI technology. But one of the things that I've been disrupted is that by the cr creativity of some of these tools and what you can achieve with this. And of course, for people creative like you and me is wonderful, but I'm sure it disrupts a lot of people. So how do you see this disruption? Uh, because it's going to be creating a lot of, uh, especially if you don't know how to use these tools, you're going to be in a, being a, the, I would say a, a tricky situation, let's put it that way. Because in the end of the day, the tools are available, but most of the people are not really, it's really a, a kind of a challenge. I, I repeat this, I struggled. I've been teaching in business schools for the last 10 years. I don't have time now, but all my students are less digital than me. And even all my team, I have people around the planet. They are all younger than me, most of them. They are not digital. So it's kind of, what the hell are you doing? You're spending your time on digital, but don't use the tools to help you. So how do you see this disrupt? Because the disruption is going to be much bigger. Um, and I think you are using that on your own possibilities. I, yeah, I think AI, I love AI. So I always say if last year was the year of NFTs and this year has been the year of the metaverse, next year is going to be the year of AI. Like that, that's 100%. And for me, as an artist, I love using AI. And I think that, I've even creating my own collection called AI Bytes, where I take the AI that I've created and then I layer on in my soundbite style the prompt that I did to make the um, art itself. So this is one example already. It's not just about you know, doing AI and then just putting it out. It's how you can take AI and make it your own style, right? And how do you do it so that it tells the story of your art rather than just creating AI and putting it out there. But I think AI is amazing for creatives because what it does is it just unlocks, again, so much of the creative's imagination um, for, for them to then springboard that, you know, whenever you're doing, as an artist, you kind of get ideas from so many places. And you can actually argue that our whole life is an AI system. Every image I've ever seen in my life has gone into my brain as a computer, like, like a computer, and that has formed the art that I push out. And so just being able to have access to millions of people's brains to create amazing different types of images are something um, amazing. For those who are very scared by it and think it's going to take over everybody's jobs, what I would say to that is, you know, imagine before when um, you know, we've seen all of this, these digital revolutions happen already. Like when, you know, AI or Photoshop, so Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop came up, then everyone's like, well, everybody can become a graphic designer, but not everybody did become a graphic designer, if that makes sense. You know, like just because technology changes or enhances a, um, I would say, 
um, an industry, it doesn't mean that everyone will rush to become that, if that makes sense. So yes, we're going to, with AI, maybe we'll get a lot more people before, you know, professionally, like if you wanted a professional photograph, you would have to hire a professional photographer. Now, because of the way our iPhones are made, um, you know, because we have ability to get lighting systems and our education, we can take now amazing professional photography ourselves, but there are still professional photographers there, if that makes sense. So just because there's going to be a digital revolution, nothing will replace a human touch, nothing will ever replace the energetic level of what it means to be connected on a physical level, and not everyone will just become you know, obsolete. And so I think people have to embrace technology and, and know that it's only going to enhance what we do already, but we are still the original creators of what we can do with the tech. We are still driving the tech. The tech is not driving us, even when it comes to AI. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. So, so last question. Um, so in terms of, uh, you have a lot of things going on. So what are the really focus that you have right now at this moment for both your creative art, um, your uh, as well uh, areas as a creative entrepreneur, um, and as well some things you might want to push to our audience and engage with them? Yeah, absolutely. So creatively, I'm super excited that I'm launching my augmented reality a soundbite collection um, later on this month, which will be you know, available to be able to be bought in um, Dubai itself, like in all of the Emirates, there's a store opening uh, that will be ho housing that, um, but obviously also available online for people to buy either as a physical NFT or as a fashion item. And so I'm super excited about that collection that's coming out. Um, but then more from an entrepreneurial perspective, um, you know, Dennis, as we talked about, is that for me, for next year, uh, you know, I realize that I, I'm kind of split in three ways. I am first, um, you know, an artist and I have my collections um, that I talk and that, that I release and aligned my purpose on how I would like people to change through art and technology. Um, but then secondly, I'm a speaker, I'm a, a pioneer in the space and a thought leader, and that I will always continue, um, especially along my forms of education, like talking to wonderful people like yourselves, again, in the ecosystem that's also trying to build um, the education system around the world and to, to, to highlight um, some of the, you know, to just trailblaze the technology, I would say. And then thirdly, um, my aim is to create my own kind of art. I wanted it to be the most prestigious end-to-end -end NFT and art studio in the region. So whether, you know, brands or other artists want to come work with me or educate the, the next generation on how we can actually, you know, people can take, how they can participate in the Web3 NFT and Metaverse space, uh, whether you're a brand, artist and beyond. Well, wonderful. And I know that uh, that for people that uh, like this kind of things, and I think everyone will like your art, please research Amrita. We'll put all the links. You can go to our website. You can engage. Um, any places that you want just people to find your work? I don't know if there's exhibitions that can actually find. I know on your website we'll put that, but coming from you is always got the last, the last thing. Yeah, absolutely. If you go to my website, it's um, just www. Uh, amrita.art um, and my you know I'm very active on LinkedIn at Amrita Seti um, my Instagram is art.by.amrita and on Twitter it's art by Amrita um, and so you know follow me on all of those even on on TikTok sorry it's art underscore by underscore Amrita as well um, engage with me. I, I am somebody who's very active. I like to be organic and authentic. It's me who's posting. It's me who's engaging. And, um, you know, my collections will all be available online. But if you are going to be in Dubai, um, then they'll be on sale in more of the Emirates um, from the 17th to 26th. And I will also be releasing a Christmas collection. So, um, you know, the, that ugly sweater, sweater, Christmas sweater, Dennis, that everybody always says, I'm going to make the ugly Christmas sweater 
the coolest thing you're gonna ever own. Um, so do make sure you check out in the next couple of weeks um, so you can have one and be the coolest person at your Christmas party. Thank you so much. I have one. So, yes. <laughs> and I will probably continue. Have, 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 <laughs> have you been showing it? Yeah, no, no, actually, actually, I passed it to the, the family and the young people. They love it. Uh, so <laughs> there'll be more candidates. That's great. And I, <laughs> well, congratulations for your work. I'm It's been a, an honor to have you here. And I'm sure this will be the first we'll have as well a live event for people listening in, uh, here in the series. But uh, love to hear you um, and actually your passion and dedication, especially your work. So congratulations and a lot of more success. And I just wanted to say thank you so much, um, the work you do is unbelievable. The energy that you have to build the ecosystem, to, to create what you're creating and to give others the platform to explain what they're doing um, is only making everything a better place. So thank you so much. Amen, thank you so much, it's an honor. <laughs>